Okay, the Snowflake project, uh, you're going to design and model a two-dimensional snowflake for the laser cutter. And as you do this, you, of course, need to consider your design intent, positive and negative space, work smarter, not harder. Um, I'll walk through a few examples along with the constraints here, and then I'll have a separate video that shows and demonstrates what you need to do uh, or introduce some new tools or what you need to do in order to submit this assignment. Okay, so um, of course, you're gonna wanna use regular polygon tool or circular pattern mirroring. Um, and the new skills that I'll introduce would be inserting an image and using the spline tool. Almost anything can be turned into a snowflake. Um, Obviously, we're going to document in your engineer's notebook. And when you get down to your final submission, it needs to be submitted as a PDF with no dimensions, um, no border or title block. OK, so here's a few examples. The overall size constraint needs to be 80 millimeters round or squarish by two millimeters thick. And if you need to drill a hole in it um, for your fishing line or your tree hanger, if you want, um, you want to have a 1.5 millimeter hole. So we see there's a hole on Yoda's head. There's a hole in this geometric design. There's no hole in the G-clef because there's already a natural hole there in order to hang the G-clef from. So as, as you can see, um, you can turn anything into a snowflake. And in fact, in 2016, uh, I had a class do the entire set of Star Wars snowflakes. Everybody picked a figure and a few people picked more than one. And here I have uh, Yoda. Of course, it's stylized a little bit because all features need to be at least a millimeter and two millimeters is better. So here we see Yoda's head. And if you didn't notice down here is a simplified version of the symbol of the Jedi. Now there should be a star kind of in the middle where his elongated neck is. And the star is too small of a feature to have on this, but this does have the, that circle that's patterned as the overall shape of the uh, Jedi. Okay, so looking at a couple examples of how you might do this. Um, here's one example um, that's mostly a geometric sketch. And even if we look in that sketch, uh, we can see that I do have a circular, circular pattern. I've got regular polygons and, and I've patterned that in there. So we have a couple circular patterns going on. And it's just a geometric sketch and you have to visualize what you're gonna cut, what you're gonna remove, make those selections. Um, I did some trimming. So that's why I had everything fully constrained, but then when I trimmed away what I wanted, some of my constraints did disappear. So you just need to be cautious with that um, and know that uh, it's gonna be more difficult to go backwards and change something because now everything is not fully constrained. Um, and that's all right. This is an artistic project, not something that has uh, interacting parts where that's really important. So then of course I extruded and I got that shape. And as I'm looking at that, when I'm talking about every feature needs to be at least a millimeter and two millimeters is better. If I measure between those two points, we can see here that I do get a distance of one millimeter. Uh, and that's about as small as you wanna go. And it's still connected in six places, but this is still a, a, a fairly fragile. Um, so I, it actually would be better if that was a millimeter and a half or two millimeters instead of just one. Um, and then I'm looking at that, I didn't quite like it. So I added an additional sketch an additional extrusion that looks a little bit better. I wanted a little more open space. And then of course I have a sketch, a third sketch for my hole. And then finally there's my hole. This didn't seem to have a natural place to hang it from. So I um, drilled a hole. Uh, when you go to submit this and turn this in, 
what you need to do is you need to create a drawing, just like we've always done, create drawing. But instead of putting dimensions on it, um, you would actually delete away the entire title block, and you're going to submit and print as a PDF, print, download a PDF of just your snowflake in one-to-one -one scale. Now, again, it's important that you get the size constraints correct for this. So as you work through this, again, we want to be 80 millimeters and your extrusion is two millimeters thick and that's the same size as the acrylic we're going to cut it out of. Okay, so that is one way to make a snowflake basically working at the sketch level. Um, the other way you could do a snowflake, I'm going to go home to my home on shape here. The other way to do a snowflake, as all the Star Wars figures were done, um, is to use the uh, image and spline tool and a lot more patterning of the features. Rather than patterning in the sketch, pattern at the feature level. So here we have the Michigan State Spartans. And let me just draw back and walk through this. Okay, so... I'll demonstrate how to do an image and a sketch in another profile here in, a, in another video. But at this point, you can see clearly I brought in an image and we can even see the images that I brought in. There's the Spartan helmet and there's the Spartan S. Okay, so and I still was thinking about the size. So actually in that sketch, I did dimension if I want it to be 80 millimeters. I was thinking about and just eyeballing this to the origin 40 millimeters because as, as I pattern it, that's going to make it 80 then when I rotate around the origin. So I did mostly size that. I did not fully constrain, but what we'll see in here is we still need a completely enclosed profile to select entities to extrude. So you have to be cautious that you don't have overlapping profiles, but we now have a single profile that we can extrude. And you notice I connected the hairdress and then I, I only extruded the rectangles. Okay, so then as we look at this, we draw back, there's the extrusion. I left room to mirror across the other side and I left room, I, I put that sketch a little bit on the other side so I could have just patterned one head like eight or 10 times, but I thought, hey, let's mirror it. And then I didn't like these extra little things here. So I could have either filled them in or I, I chose to do another sketch and cut those little extra triangles away because I thought that looked a little bit better. And then I needed a sketch uh, in order to do my circular pattern. You still have to have a reference circle so I needed a sketch for my pattern. And then in this case, you know, Yoda was patterned uh, six times and the Spartan helmet, it seemed like four times worked out better. Six was too many, three wouldn't be enough um, in terms of the amount of open space and closed space. And then of course, as I continue to walk through this, uh, I extruded then the square in the middle I brought in another sketch of the Michigan S, the Spartan S, um, that I wanted to add on to that. And then uh, did a cut extrude of that. And then it still looks like a lot of open space in the middle. So then I went ahead and drew a triangle to cut part of that away and mirrored it to the other side. And that's kind of what I finished at. Um, again, I don't think this needs a hole because there's a nice small place here that I could tie a piece of fishing line to or um, use a tree hanger if I want to put this on my Christmas tree. Okay, but there is a uh, Michigan Spartan snowflake. Um, we'll display or demonstrate how to do some of those other skills. Uh, using the spline and bringing an image in in another video. But at this point, that gives you an idea of what you 
you know, what tools you might use and how your design intent might affect how you would model uh, your snowflake, whether you want to do more of a geometric design or whether you want to pattern something at the feature level. Okay, so should be able to really have fun with this, um, pay attention to sizes and uh, be creative, make something to make it your own.